Netflix is back with season two of Sex Education, and we are at Mordell once again, where our favorite characters are dealing with new situations, more drama, more relationships, more awkward sexual encounters. We also got some new characters that they throw in the mix that definitely complicate things. We're going to talk about that and much more. Two of Sex Education brings back our favorite characters, including Otis, who is finally securing a relationship with Ola, but gets hit with the reality and pressures of a high school romance. That is further tested by the introduction of new students who challenges the status quo at Mordell High in a chlamydia outbreak that causes students to question and struggle with topical issues. What's going on, everybody? Elliot back again with a brand new TV review for Netflix's season two of Sex Education. Very excited to talk about this show with you all. But before we dive into it, for those that are new to this channel, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. What are we all about here in Movie Files? Well, we review the latest movies, TV shows, we react to the latest trailers, we do unboxings for the latest Blu-rays, we do giveaways on this channel, and so much more. So definitely consider subscribing. And also, if and when you've seen this new season of Sex Education, I want to know what you all thought of the season as a whole. Who were some of your favorite new characters? What are you hoping to see in season three? And you know I gotta ask, did you like season one or season two better? Let me know in the comments. So as I've been doing a lot of my uh, recent Netflix reviews in the last month or two, is I spend the first minute or two speaking on the show without spoiling anything, so non-spoilers for the first two minutes or so, and then the rest of the video dives more into the character breakdowns, recapping, give, getting more into the, uh, the 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 nitty gritty and the spoilers there. So that's how I kind of handle this uh, this review here. So non-spoiler thoughts first, pros and cons without spoiling anything. I really enjoyed this season. I might go as far as saying... <clears throat> that I enjoyed season two a little bit more than season one, even though I really enjoyed season one. You can see my review that I did for this uh, season one uh, that I did last week, I believe. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I just thought that the the first half of the season was just so different. It was so clever, unique, and it played against expectations where you thought the show was going to go left, but then they ended up going right. And then the second half of season one kind of really played into everything that season one was, or the first half wasn't, where it kind of fell into those tropes and you kind of got the expected relationships and the expected drama. So this this season for me, it did those things, but it was more consistent. You know, I kind of knew what I was getting into in season two, unlike I did with season one and all of that teenage ain'ts and the awkward sexual conversations and Otis and his mom and Mav and all the characters that we get. I just feel like it flowed so much better to me personally, as well as throwing in these new characters and how they play into our old character storyline. I thought it was just more consistent and a little bit more even in the sense of, you know, as I had mentioned in my review last week, the show reminds me of if, if Saved by the Bell and Euphoria on HBO had a love baby, this would be the result of that because it handles those things so well. It has Breakfast Club, you know, kind of kind of vibes, but it has those serious conversations that a lot of shows don't like to tackle. Unlike, you know, like I said, Euphoria, which I think has these teenagers and these younger adults dealing with more mature conversations and things like that. So I think this show did a really good job of doing this, especially in season two. So I like the tone. I like the themes. I like the things that they say in this show. And I just love the characters, you know, from Otis to Maeve to Otis's mom, Jean, to Eric, who's probably my favorite character, especially in this season. And then we get all these new characters, a uh, Raheem and, you know, um, uh, Viv and you know all the new characters Dex and everyone that we got to see I thought that it was just a great mixture of actors uh, that just know who their characters are and just take you know for those that were a part of season one and expanding their arc but also like I said this season brings in a couple new characters and I like how they mixed in with the old characters uh, I, I always want like I said one of the things I really enjoy about this show is the conversations that are had in the show not getting too much into it on this non-spoiler aspect but they're dealing with things like you know, parents and how they raise their kids and how that, you know, how their bad parenting can affect them as teenagers. You know, we have the, you know, dysfunctional kind of uh, lack of conversations between a mother and a son, you know, like we get with Otis and Gene. And this is so many things that the show handles. Sexual assault, you know, people not being uh, uh, comfortable enough telling their parents or their closest friends their sexuality, things of that nature. I love how this show handles those conversations. And it's conversations that should be had. And I think the show handles it really, really well. If I were to give any criticisms, which I'll touch more on in my in my spoiler half. I thought that even though I really enjoyed a lot of these new characters, at times I felt like there were almost too many characters and too many storylines where I didn't feel like certain storylines got enough uh, screen time and not enough resolution. Like we would have a situation we brought up at the beginning of the episode, and you would think it might carry into uh, you know two or three episodes, but they would 
wrap it up in one episode or they would drag along these unnecessary storylines that just felt a little to a little like I said dragged on or a little bit kind of drawn out but I would say that was probably my biggest thing with this season two was a lot of great characters a lot of new characters especially like I said the characters from season one and bringing them back, but I just feel like all the new introductions and the new storyline with Jackson and Viv, and you know, we, we get this Isaac character and Dex and all this stuff, great characters, and I'm excited to see what they do with them in season two, but I almost feel like it was too crowded of a season, uh, and, and other things too, like I'll talk about in my spoiler review, but there's some relationships that I just am not a fan of from season one that I just don't think are necessary, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in my spoiler review, but overall thoughts, again, if you're a fan of season one like I was, I think you're going to enjoy season two. Uh, if it's not on par with season one I think it's even better than season one in my personal opinion and I highly recommend you all check it out for those that have seen season one and if you haven't even given this show a chance definitely check out season one it's an easy binge it's eight episodes about a 50 minutes or so but it goes by really quickly so if this is your first time tuning in to any review from sex education I highly recommend this show and I really enjoy season two even with my uh, criticisms there so that's my non-spoiler portion of the video now let's dive deeper into the character breakdowns my more in-depth conversation about about my pros and cons. So first and foremost, you know, we got all of our favorite characters back from an Otis, from a Gene, from a Mev to an Eric to, you know, Adam's back and we got Jackson. We got all of our main characters back this time around. And as far as my character breakdowns, you know, Otis, who's our main character, you know, he had a lot to go through in this season. Him and his relationship with Ola, which I thought, you know, from season one, I'm like, yes, this show is giving us, I didn't, the whole how do I say this? The whole uh, Maeve and Otis relationship, I don't think necessarily has to be that. Like, I, I love that this show sometimes does this thing where it's like, not everyone has to be in a relationship, you know? Like, in this season, Jackson and Viv, you you might have thought that there was some ro romance going on there, but no, they were genuinely friends. Hopefully, they don't explore anything, and not saying that nothing wrong with that, but I just think that it's okay that a man and a woman can be friends without being sexually attracted to each other, and I like stuff like that. So, when it comes to Maeve and Otis, we didn't get a lot of them <coughs> on screen together this season. You know, Maeve was doing her thing with her mom, Aaron, who came back in town, and her new half-sister. And then, obviously, we'll talk about Isaac and, and Maeve later on. But, you know, she was doing her thing, and obviously, Otis dealing his dealing with his relationship with Ola, which unfortunately ended up uh, not working out. Ola had other plans with her and Lily, who Lily was one of my favorite characters from season one. They have a thing now, and obviously, Otis dealing with stuff with his mom and her relationship with uh, Jenkoff, I believe, is name was uh Ola's dad uh and that kind of crumbling apart so it was a lot that Otis went through in this season but one of the things that I really liked that the season two did uh that season one did was o uh, Otis and Eric were friends the entire season which I was kind of bummed out about in season one when they spent time apart from each other and you had all that stuff with Eric kind of being down and out and I'll talk about Eric because he's my favorite character but you know I was glad to see them uh on screen a lot more than we saw in season one but in result to that like I said we didn't get Otis and Ma uh, Maeve on screen that much but you know like I said Otis from the beginning of the season starting off with this whole you know finally be able to release himself which he wasn't able to do in season one and, and like I said seeing his relationship kind of uh grow with Ola but at the same time kind of you know fall apart part with him and, 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 and Mev and everything that was going on there. So I thought that he had a really good arc, you know, especially that last moment that he got with his dad, kind of telling his dad he doesn't want to be like him. He doesn't want to be an asshole like his dad is. And I kind of like that moment for Otis and kind of seeing what he's going to do in season two. Uh, speaking of Otis, you know, we got Jean, who I'm a big fan of, of, uh, you know, Mrs. Anderson there. I'm a big fan of her work from the X-File days. I thought she had a really interesting character arc, and I thought that she had a lot more to do in season two than she did in season one. Obviously, her relationship with Jankoff or Jenko, I can't remember remember the guy's name it's in the description below but you know their relationship started off a little you know funny and interesting and obviously keeping that relationship under hush between their kids with Otis and Ola but things coming out and obviously Otis wasn't a fan of that so that kind of hurt the relationship but also you know Gene wasn't a fan of him coming over all the time and we saw how that kind of played out and obviously Remy coming back in the mix uh, uh Otis's dad and they had their little which again I'll talk about it in my cons, but I felt like it was just so many different storylines, right? Like what happened with Gene and, you know, Remy. I, obviously, uh, Remy had is getting a divorce and he's a sex addict. And I know that, you know, Gene didn't really want to play on that. But I just wonder, was what was the conversation after they kissed? Was it just that one time and they knew it was a mistake, or at least Gene did? And they just, they just never really addressed it per se, in my opinion. But again, <clears throat> I really enjoyed that uh, what Gene got this season. She got a lot more, in my opinion, to do this season than she did last. Meeting up with, you know, Adam's mom and 
and having that kind of uh, relationship there. And then obviously the big kind of, uh, I guess you can call it a big reveal for Jean is she's pregnant. So what now for Jean in season three? So I thought she had a really good arc. My favorite character, like I said, is Eric. And I really loved Eric this season. If you talk about relationships that I really want to see kind of work through the entire season, that was him and our new character, Raheem, which I'll talk about later. But I thought they were just so perfect for each other. You know, yes, they were kind of opposites in regards to their religion. You know, Raheem didn't have much of a family there other than his uncle that ran the shop that he was living in. Uh, you know, I really thought that that was a good relationship, a good kind of healthy relationship, unlike Eric and Adam, who I think, you know, if you watch my review for season one, I just don't think they belong together. There's nothing wrong about giving someone a second chance, but I just think that all those years that Adam was just bad to Eric and being a bully to him, it's just like, why would you want to get in that toxic type of relationship? So we'll see how that plays out in season three. But, you know, Eric was just such a ball. He's my favorite character, as, as I had mentioned. I think he's hilarious. I think he had a, a lot to do this season, dealing with Raheem and dealing with Adam and Dylan obviously with his best friend Otis, but I really enjoyed the arc that we got with Eric there. And then Maeve, you know, she had a lot to go with. Again, she didn't have a, a lot of screen time with Otis, but she was dealing with her mom, Aaron. She was dealing with this Isaac character who I'm not a big fan of. You know, I will talk about him later, but, you know, her joining the debate team and the quiz team and her doing all that stuff, you know, it was nice to kind of see her not necessarily focusing on a relationship this season. And really, like she said a couple times in this season too, she wanted to work on herself and you got those moments with her. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with her and Isaac and this kind of love triangle that they're developing there. But I really enjoyed her arc and everything that we got with her mom and her new stepsister and everything that happened with that. And, and you know, she calling, uh, you know, uh, uh, child services to come into uh, into the mix. So really interesting arc for her. But again, I thought that it was really kind of nice to see her kind of not focusing on another boy or another relationship, but really focusing on herself. I really enjoyed that aspect. Again, we got Adam coming back <clears throat> from military school. I thought that Adam had a lot more to do in this season than he did in season one because I thought in season one they just kind of threw him in randomly. It's like, oh, don't forget about Adam. He's in the background. Oh, don't forget about him. But this season, it played more organically into the main storyline, him and Olaf's relationship and her, Olaf finding out about her being an asexual, which, again, I love how the show touches on these conversations. And Adam kind of, you know, growing into that, he still hasn't necessarily told his parents, even though he had that big reveal at the school play and he revealed that he wants to hold Eric's hand. Nice moment, but again, I'm just not, it's nothing against the actor. <clears throat> it's nothing against the storyline. I just don't think that's a healthy relationship. And I think that's just what the show is doing. It's like, hey, not every relationship is going to be, you know, rainbows and cupcakes and, you know, happiness. There's sometimes that people make bad decisions, which I think Eric is making a bad decision with Garrett getting with Adam. But we'll see how that plays out in next season, which I would imagine we'll get, you know, an announcement for season three sooner rather than later. But Adam, you know, He's he's with Eric now. We'll see how that work how that works out. Uh, Jackson, <laughs> it was very interesting for him. You talk about another character that didn't really spend a lot on a uh, on a relationship. You know, him and, and Mev kind of left as they were in season one. They're not together. They had one or two scenes together. But Jackson had his whole, whole his whole ordeal with him not want to swim. Him uh, inflicting pain on himself to not swim and to find other interests as he met and, and kind of had that conversation with a new character, uh, Viv, who, you know, I like that that kind of relationship. Again, they didn't have to be in love. They didn't have to like each other. They're just genuinely friends. And I like their kind of back and forth. And her telling, you know, his parents that he hurts himself. And I thought that was a, an important message. Again, as a, you know, a teenager, an adult, if you ever see someone inflicting pain on themselves, you should help. You should be there for them. You should tell their loved ones. I thought that was a good message from the show. But, you know, Jackson had a really interesting arc. I, I liked his uh, arc this season more than I did in season one. Uh, again, him working on himself and him finding other interests. You know, I think that's another thing that the show did is showing that you don't always have to be who people want you to be. You know, Jackson's parents want him to be the swimmer, want him to be the top A student, all that stuff, the popular kid. But he wants to do something else. He wants to learn who he is as a, as a teenager and growing into a man. So I liked his arc as well. You know, we got the headmaster who's getting a divorce now. And he was just, you know, if we have a, a, a villain of this show outside of maybe Isaac, in my opinion, is definitely the headmaster and everything that he did with his divorce and not loving his wife the way he should or paying attention to Adam, but also doing what he did to Jean and releasing all her notes about about, you know, the, um, the uh, conversations he was having with the students. I thought that was, you know, like I said, he's the villain of the show. And we'll we'll see what happens with uh, the headmaster come season three. Will he still have a job? Will he get his wife back? Will he accept Adam for who he is? It'll be really interesting to see what goes on there. So, you know, other characters, supporting characters, we got Ruby and, you know, the 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 day after pill, that whole scene when Otis finally has a party and kind of lets loose a little bit. You know, I thought that the Untouchables had a little bit more to do this season. And again, there was a lot of characters that we got from season one that got a little bit more 
more storyline, got a little bit more screen time, as well as these new characters. But I thought that Ruby and the Untouchables had a little bit more to do. And Amy's character, who I thought, you know, Amy is so adorable and just so funny. And that that was, you know, again, conversations that need to be had. She was sexually assaulted. At first, she didn't think much of it, the guy on the bus and everything that went on along there. But I thought that was a really cool really cool powerful moment when she was able to connect with all the other girls close to the second half of the season when she admitted uh that she was shook up about what happened and I like her arc and her getting back with Steve and and you know coming to terms of not letting that person uh um you know destroy her life and destroy what she has going for so I like that moment for Amy there so again a lot of great characters a lot of good uh uh like I said I'm going to talk about Lily again she was great and her and Olaf we'll see how that relationship works out but it looks like they seem like a really healthy relationship uh which you know uh, Eric and Adam, maybe not the most healthy, but I like that Lily and Olaf have a thing now. Um, and again, you know, we got more of Eric's dad, or I should say, um, Otis's dad with Remy coming into the mix. Uh, but as far as our new characters go, we got Viv, who I like, and you know, her kind of starting off as, as uh, you know, Jackson called her a robot. She kind of opened up in the second half of the season. We got the kid from Game of Thrones, Dra- uh, Drax, I believe his name was, or Drex. He came into the mix. Again, Raheem, really interesting character from French, has different, uh, you know, kind of beliefs and backgrounds. Him and Eric, uh, I just thought they were just great together, you know, and it'll be really interesting to see what happens to Raheem come season three, but I thought he was a nice character. But we got to talk about Isaac, right? <sighs> From the first scene, from him, at first I thought, you know, like these guys are getting over with his whole disability and, you know, taking people's, uh, you know, uh, kindness and, and using it against them. And, you know, it, he had a touching story. And, you know, yes, him and Mev have a lot in common in regards to growing up in the system and not having reliable parents or whatnot. But, man, that kid was dirty, man. And, the, and the, which, you know, speaking of the ending moment where we see Otis finally admits his love to, to uh, Mev there and, you know, he deletes the message we'll see what happens you know with that relationship with uh Isaac there but that was a really really kind of slickish move a little kind of backstabbing move that we got there so we'll see what happens with you know like I said if we have the headmaster as one villain I might say I'll throw Isaac in that mix as well so again as I had mentioned in my non-spoiler common to my biggest things with the season was it was just too many characters at one point I feel like we would touch on one story again with Otis and 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 Ruby he's losing his virginity that was just one episode that never they never talked about it again just like you know Maeve and Jackson I guess she never mentioned that he she had an abortion that was never brought up and then just like little things like the, the sex clinic I know that Gene was stepping on Otis's toes with the whole sex clinic but they never really brought that back up I assume that the sex clinic for the teenagers is still a thing into season three but they really didn't address that uh, and, I, and again it's nothing against the new characters or, or, or some of my favorite characters from the past season I just feel like it was just too a lot of storylines going on and it was just like oh I want to go back to that or if you're going to spend time on that let's let's actually ju- jump into the conversation a little bit more so I just feel like again new characters which are great a fun characters but I just thought it was a lot of stuff going on at one time so and again I thought the ending was a little bit underwhelming with the whole deleting of the message and seeing what happens with Otis uh you know admitting his love to uh to Mev there so overall you know like I said uh on my non-spoiler I really enjoyed the season more than I did the, the first season which I really enjoyed but I thought that the consistency and tone and the the character development was really well done and I just had a blast with the second season and I sat down this past weekend and watched on Saturday uh all all, all eight episodes in one watch in one sitting so that's my thoughts on the show again if you enjoy season one I think you'll enjoy season two on the same level if not a little bit higher in my opinion so that's what I thought of season two of sex education but I want to know what you all thought of this new season what were some of your favorite moments your your least favorite moments who were some of your favorite characters and what are you expecting to see in season three and did you like season two more than season one or vice versa let me know in the comments like I said up top subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit that bell so you can stay up to date with all of my videos give this video a thumbs up really helps out the channel keep an eye out for some more content i'll have on my channel pretty soon in regards to trailer reaction movie reviews tv reviews and many more things Thank you all for the continued support. Again, I'm in my new place, so I am working out the kinks in regards to where I want to shoot videos. But right now, this is the best situation for the time being. Uh, But again, thank you all for watching this review, and we'll see you in the next video.